The Book of Proverbs Chapter 19 Proverbs 19 verses 1 to 29 Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good, and he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Wealth mocketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursueth them with words, yet they are wanting to him. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish. Delight is not seemly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. The discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. The king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul, but he that dispiseth his ways shall die. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. A man of great wrath shall suffer punishment, for if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Hear counsel, and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. The desire of a man is his kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied, he shall not be visited with evil. A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Smite a scorner, and the simple will beware and reprove one that hath understanding, and he will understand knowledge. He that wasteth his father, and chasteth away his mother, is a son that causeth shame, and bringeth reproach. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. An ungodly witness scorneth judgment, and the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. Judgments are prepared for scorners, and stripes for the back of fools. Opening sentence. Finding the theme. The poor righteous man versus the wealthy fool. The theme of this chapter, as indicated by the words better than, regards judging righteously between the upright man who is poor, and the wealthy man who is foolish and perverse. It is helpful to remember that this section of Proverbs, which began in chapter 10 colon 1, is divided into chapters with particular themes, but the entire section was written as instructions for the king of Israel to help him judge between good and evil. From this chapter onward, there will be more personal addresses to the king, as he sits on the throne to judge the people. The poor, the word poor is found approximately 200 times in the King James Bible, and it is found in the books of Psalms and Proverbs, far more than any other books of the Bible. Thus far in Proverbs, the poor have been mentioned only 10 times in a very general sense. From this chapter forward, it is used 25 times and becomes a theme in itself. Jesus often spoke of the poor in his earthly ministry. Matthew 5 verse 3 Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. King David frequently referred to himself as poor in the Psalms. Psalm 86 verse 1A Prayer of David Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me for I am poor and needy. When the scriptures describe a person as being poor, it most often refers to the spiritual condition and not the lack of physical riches. However, there will come a time in Israel's history, during the Great Tribulation, when many in Israel will have to choose poverty over riches to maintain their godly integrity. Poor ignorant fool. Proverbs 19 verse 2 also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good, and he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. To be without knowledge is called ignorance. To haste with the feet, in this context and elsewhere in Proverbs, implies hurrying to be wealthy. Men often haste to be physically rich, but have no desire to pursue the riches of God's word. To be poor with integrity is good, to be wealthy and ignorant of God is evil. Proverbs 19 verse 3 The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Fret means to rub against, to agitate, or to chafe. A foolish, ignorant man chooses to walk contrary to God's word, 
and his foolishness leads to the perversion of God's way, the trial of the poor. Verses 4 to 9 present the difficulty of the poor man who has been falsely accused in a court of law. The wealthy man who has brought charges against his poor neighbor can offer bribes to his friends, tempting them to speak as false witnesses. The judge might also be entreated to rule in the rich man's favor with a bribe. The only thing in the poor man's favor is the integrity of his words, which his neighbors will not hear. While it is possible for a judge to pervert justice on earth, verses 5 and 9 reveal the final judgment of God from heaven in such cases. Proverbs 19 verses 4 to 9 wealth mocketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. All the brethren of the poor do hate him, how much more do his friends go far from him? He pursueth them with words, yet they are wanting to him. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul, he that keepeth understanding shall find good. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish. This scenario also pictures the nation of Israel during the seven-year tribulation. Jesus warned his disciples that they would be brought to trial by their brethren who are their neighbors. See Mark 13 verses 11 to 12 and Luke 21 verses 12 to 16. Delight to get wisdom. Proverbs 19 verse 10 delight is not seemly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. A wise son chooses to delight himself in the word of God. A fool does not take pleasure in getting wisdom, so he rejects God's word which makes him an ignorant fool. A foolish son is unfit to rule over the people. In the Bible, princes are usually sons who are appointed as rulers over principalities, divisions of land within the kingdom. If the sons delight in God's word, they will be able to judge rightly. If they reject God's word, the sons will need an authority to rule over them instead. Wisdom to pass over. Proverbs 19 verses 11 to 12 The discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. The king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. A king or judge must have wisdom to discern when to pass over a transgression. There are examples in Israel's history when men transgressed and God passed over their offense, i.e., David in 2 Samuel 12 verse 13 and Psalms 32 verse 1. A wise ruler may do the same, Genesis 50 verse 17. The inheritance of God. Proverbs 19 verses 13 to 14 A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. Both the foolish son and the contentious wife represent the rebellious nation of Israel. The foolish son is ignorant of God's wisdom, and the contentious wife resists the authority of her husband. Both are the cause of continuous misery. A prudent wife is one who chooses to obey the word of God. This woman or wife is pictured as wisdom in Proverbs chapters 1-9, and virtuous woman of Proverbs chapter 31. The slothful soul. Proverbs 19 verses 15 to 16 Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul, but he that despiseth his ways shall die. Slothfulness in this context refers to the soul, or the inner man, who despises the word of God instead of delighting in it. The psalmist described the lean condition of the soul of the nation of Israel when they failed to delight in God's word. Psalm 106 verses 13 to 15 They soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness, and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request but sent leanness into their soul. Do good and lend to the poor. The following proverb turns the reader's attention back to the poor. Proverbs 19 verse 17 He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. Jesus taught his disciples about taking care of the poor during his earthly ministry. Luke 6 verse 35 But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. An address to the king. Verses 18 to 21, 25 and 27 are addressed directly to the son who sits as the king and judge over Israel. Proverbs 19 verses 18 to 21 Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. A man of great wrath shall suffer punishment, for if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Hear counsel, and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, 
the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. As long as the king's foolish son is alive there is hope for him to attain unto the wisdom taught by God's instruction. Left unto himself, Proverbs 29 verse 15, an unchanged Asti's son will eventually become a man of great wrath. Either a father will chasten his son while there is hope, or a judge will chasten him when he is grown. If the king refuses to correct his son, God will have to chastise him. The goal is for the son to hear and to submit unto the wise counsel of God, which is the final authority for all judgment. Truth better than lies lying face. Proverbs 19 verse 22 The desire of a man is his kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. In a court of law, every man desires the kindness of the judge. A righteous ruler should judge in favor of the poor man, who has integrity over the influential rich man who is bearing false witness. Abide satisfied. Proverbs 19 verse 23 The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied, he shall not be visited with evil. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom, Proverbs 1 verse 7, 9 10. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life according to Proverbs 14 verse 27. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil, Proverbs 16 verse 6. The fear of the Lord leads to everlasting life, which is described as a time of continual satisfaction with no more evil influences. Hand to mouth mouth. Proverbs 19 verse 24 A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Proverbs 16 verse 26 says that even a lazy man who hates to work is forced to feed his physical body because his mouth craves it of him. Proverbs 19 verse 24 is not referring to the physical state of man, but to the spiritual. The body craves food and sends hunger signals to the mind, but the soul also craves spiritual nourishment. This nourishment can only come from the word of God, but the slothful man is too lazy to feed himself. Personal address. The following proverb also has an implied subject of you, which is addressed to the king. Proverbs 19 verse 25 smite a scorner, and the simple will beware and reprove one that hath understanding, and he will understand knowledge. A citizen of the kingdom of Israel did not have authority to smite anyone. Only rulers of Israel had authority from the word of God to beat and instruct those brought to them for judgment. Deuteronomy 25 verse 340 stripes he may give him, and not exceed, lest, if he should exceed, and beat him above these with many stripes, then thy brother should seem vile unto thee. Waste father and chase away mother. Proverbs 19 verse 26, He that wasteth his father, and chasteth away his mother, is a son that causeth shame, and bringeth reproach. A son who wastes his father brings ruin upon the family, and spends up his inheritance, as did the prodigal son of the New Testament, Luke 15 verses 11 to 13. A son who chases away his mother is one who refuses to obey her instructions. This pictures the nation of Israel rejecting God's law. Proverbs 1 verse 8 My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. The key to righteous judgment. Proverbs 19 verse 27 Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. A son who will not hear God's instructions will usually listen to false doctrine that is contrary to his father's word. Conclusion Proverbs 19 verses 28 to 29 An ungodly witness scorneth judgment, and the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. Judgments are prepared for scorners, and stripes for the back of fools. This chapter ends with a final word to the king regarding judgment, which he is to administer to the ungodly and wicked scorner who is a fool. This includes administering stripes as physical punishment. Summary, Proverbs chapter 19, is about God's son who sat as the king, and judge over the nation of Israel. The king was required to judge each case righteously based upon the commandments that God gave to the nation in the law of Moses. The king must not show favor unto a wealthy man above a poor man, nor should he accept false testimony in any case. In the end, God will judge everyone according to the standard of his word, which has been made known unto all men. Dispensational Consideration There is no king or judge sitting in authority over believers today in the dispensation of grace. Instead, it is the preserved word of God that has authority over the believer's life. The word of God will reprove, correct, and instruct the believer. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 to 17 All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. There is no physical punishment administered to believers today because Jesus took the punishment for all sin when he suffered on the cross, Ephesians 1 verse 7, Colossians 1 verse 14. 
Life application. It is righteous to take pity upon the poor in all dispensations. The soul of a saved man can still suffer spiritual hunger. It is possible for a slothful believer to neglect the search for wisdom in God's word. It is not good for any soul to be without knowledge. The believer's life is based upon knowledge and cannot be faithfully lived out in ignorance of God's word. The duty of every believer is to attend unto the word of God by reading, studying, believing, and applying it. Righteous judgment and discernment between good and evil is a necessary part of the believer's walk in every dispensation. A believer is expected to use the word of God as the foundation for faith, daily practice, and to judge all things. Proverbs 20 verse 6, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find? Proverbs chapter 20 proves that all men are prone to deception. Proverbs chapter 19 homework. Read, Psalms 49 is a companion passage to Proverbs chapter 19, which contrasts the poor man who walks in his integrity against the rich man who is wicked. Concordance search. The word poor generally has two applications, the financially poor and the spiritually poor. King David referred to himself as poor, yet he possessed physical riches for most of his life. It is recommended that you consider how the word is used in context. Often words like wealth, rich, and poor refer to the spiritual condition of the inner man. Consider the use of the word poor as used in the Law of Moses, the first five books of the Bible. Concordance search. Find the word haste in all its forms in the book of Proverbs. Read them and notice the two things that the wicked haste unto, and that they are often done simultaneously. One, to be rich, and two, to shed innocent blood. Define, use a concordance to find all the forms of the word fret, including fretting, fretta, and fretted, to discover how it is used in the King James Bible. Compare with the definition given in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Contrast, Psalms 1 verse 2, 40 verse 8, 119 colon 70, 77, 92, 174, and Romans 7 verse 22 are verses about delighting in God's law. Isaiah 5 verse 24, Amos 2 verse 4, and Hebrews 10 verse 28 are verses about despising God's law. Concordance search, find and consider the use of the words prince and princes in the book of Genesis, which helps define the word as meaning a son or sons. In the book of Daniel, King Darius appointed 120 princes to rule over his whole kingdom, Daniel 6 verses 1 to 2. An area of land ruled by a prince is known as a principality. In Numbers 34 colon 18, God divided the promised land to the children of Israel. He appointed a prince over each portion, thus connecting the title of prince with a particular piece of land. When a servant reigns, Compare Proverbs 19 verse 10 with Proverbs 30 verses 21 to 23. The earth is disquieted, disturbed, no at rest, lacks peace, when a servant reigns. In Israel's history, after the kingdom was divided into the northern ten tribes and the southern two tribes, the servant Jeroboam reigned as king over northern Israel. That kingdom never experienced rest because Jeroboam led the kingdom into great wickedness. Read 1 Kings chapters 11 to 13 to learn more about this wicked servant king. Consider, the phrase much less is found in the King James Bible in 10 verses. Anytime much less and much more is encountered, the reader must discern between what is good or evil and what is good, better or best. Consider what would be most suitable according to God's word in each situation. Concordance search. Find the exact word wasteth in a King James Bible and compare the verses to obtain a biblical definition. Look up the word waste in Webster's 1828 Dictionary to see if the definitions agree. Concordance search. Using Bible Gateway or Blue Letter Bible, search for the word ungodly. Read through the search results to understand the type of person God describes as ungodly. Consider what the Apostle Paul says about the ungodly in Romans chapters 4 and 5, with the understanding of God's changing view of the ungodly in light of the current dispensation of grace.